Jesus of being a glutton and of being a drunkard. Did they criticize him for that? When Jesus' disciples didn't fast, they criticized him for that. You understand the picture here? No matter what you do, the people who are going to reject God will use anything as an excuse to continue rejecting God. Now notice here, the Pharisees falsely accused Jesus of being a glutton and of being a drunkard. Now some use this passage to teach that clearly Jesus drank fermented wine, intoxicating beverages, alcohol, because these people are saying Jesus is a drunkard. However, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus or was Jesus a glutton? No. Was John demon possessed? No. What are these? False accusations. You can't use a lie or a false accusation to prove anything. Jesus was no more a drunkard than he was a glutton. Now then, what were they doing? They're exaggerating and they're twisting the story. The accusation by the Jews was not that Jesus drank alcohol in moderation, but that he was a drunkard. Therefore, to those who accept this as a true statement, uh, and then attempt to use this passage to defend Christians drinking moderately or in moderation, they must confess that Jesus not only drank moderately, but that he was a drunkard. Otherwise, uh, then the whole story isn't true, and it's a false accusation. To say Jesus is a drunkard is blasphemous and absurd. If he wasn't, and it's a lie, then why are you trying to base any truth on it? The accusation was that Jesus was a wine-bibber, and that was a lie. If it's a lie, you can't use it to prove anything. The charge is no more true than the charge of gluttony or demon possession. If Jesus drank strong drink and was a you know, drunkard, then Jesus would have sinned, and therefore he couldn't have been our Savior. Proverbs 20, verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 23, 31 says, Not even to look upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Why? Because at the last it biteth like a serpent, it stingeth like an adder. Uh, now, we and other passages uh, throughout our three-year study talk with you at length about biblical alcohol uh, and biblical wine and biblical grape juice and and the line between all of these and alcoholic content and so forth. Uh, But the truth of this story is that Jesus simply drank non-alcoholic, non-fermented wine or grape juice and was therefore falsely accused of being a drunkard by those who deceitfully looked for any excuse to reject the truth. Now, I've heard so many Uh, Bible teachers say, and people say over the years, well, you know, wine naturally ferments if it's not refrigerated, and therefore the common custom of the day had to be that everyone drank alcoholic wine. And so even if you didn't want to, that was just, you know, unless it was right when it was picked, then you're drinking alcoholic wine throughout the rest of the year. And so they just move on from there. So therefore they say, well, this was alcoholic here, and it's these many other stories. Uh, However, the ancient records of which we have abundant, abundant supplies uh, tell us how that uh, the wine, the grape juice of the first century and centuries before and after, uh, they use boiling, they use filtering, and they use additives like sulfur uh, to keep it from fermenting so that they could store it all year long. Uh, And the Jewish Mishnah, uh, which is a a collection of, you know, Jewish rules basically about everything, uh, says that the common habit was to drink boiled wine, not the fermented, but the boiled and therefore unfermented wine. Horace writes in 65 B.C., uh, there is no wine sweeter like nectar. It does not produce intoxication. Uh, this was drank, drunken all year long. Isaiah 65, 8 says the new wine is formed in the cluster. Notice new wine in the grape is not fermented. Uh, Albert Barnes, in his uh, you know, great commentary, Barnes Notes on the Bible, uh, writes the wine of Judea, was the pure juice of the grape without any mixture of alcohol. It was the common drink of the people and did not produce intoxication. So don't have the idea that every time you see wine, uh, that means someone's getting drunk. We'll teach about that a lot more details and alcoholic content and what happened when it did ferment and all of that in other lessons. We'll actually mention something about that in Acts tonight. 